Hi, everyone. Happy Disability Pride Month. My name is Nico Meyering. I use he, him pronouns. And I'm a white man with floppy blonde hair, wearing large dark glasses, um, and I have a light blue shirt seated in front of a purple background. I'm honored today to be joined by my friend, Lissy Cox. Lissy, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Lissy. Um, my little avatar is me in a white shirt and a pink background. I have dark hair, pale skin. Um, I'm a chronic illness, disability influencer, and um, a proud disabled person. Lizzie, thank you so much for joining me today and taking part in this project. What uh, does disability pride mean to you? Um, so disability pride means being proud of who I am, no matter how hard the ables try and stop me. I love because it. Because disability is not something to be ashamed of. Exactly. That's a very succinct answer, thank you. Do you have a lot of experience in your life of like able to trying to make you feel bad about what you can and can't do? Yeah, um, <laughs> as someone with a with multiple invisible illnesses mm -hmm. um it's been a lot of like especially in the medical um trying to get diagnoses and then trying to be taken seriously mm -hmm. has been a lot of being told that disability isn't something i need to be proud of or even by doctors who have told me that I'm not really disabled. I just have some issues going on. And I'm like, well, technically, even in the terms of what the government considers disabled, for one thing, I'm going blind. Mm -hmm. So that's not really, even if chronic illness doesn't count as a disability, being legally blind would definitely be a disability. But chronic illness is such a, it's a disability. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that. I also think that some issues going on, to use the phrase, is not something that really belongs in a medical chart, right? Yeah. <laughs> Lizzie, thank you so much for your answer. Um, what is one thing you want non-disabled people, or the ables, as you say, to know about disability life? Um. Disability life is, I mean, for everyone, it's something different. Mm -hmm. Every disabled person has a different experience. And honestly, being disabled and finding disabled pride has been hard. But once I found it, I have, I mean, it was like, the more dis the more the able to try and stop me from being proud, the more spitefully proud I become. <laughs> um, okay. And the more spite, like, it's okay to use your anger to leverage your disability pride, if that makes sense. Like, anger is something that's okay to have. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to let it fuel you and like something I learned a long time ago was sorry brain fog moment That's um it. something I learned a while ago is that like it's okay to do the right thing for the wrong reason <laughs> and if anger is what is fueling you to have disability pride it, it's not even the wrong reason it's yeah. just the not um accepted reason um and it's okay. It doesn't matter if you're angry or just proud because you're proud. It's okay to let whatever fuels you fuel you. <laughs> I love what you've said about that. Uh, the British musician Johnny Rotten titled his autobiography, Anger is an Energy, which is absolutely true for everyone but also particularly true for folks who are gaslit, ignored, not believed, like people who are disabled uh, and folks in the chronically ill community. For sure. 
What are some lessons that being disabled has taught you? Um, that being strong in the face of oppression is hard, but it's something we need to do. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to the anger thing. Mm-hmm. Because for me, a lot of what fuels me is anger. Yeah. And just frustration. And that it's okay to be angry and frustrated about it. And um, and that it's nothing to be ashamed of. Excellent. Do you find that there's a consistent level of anger that fuels you? Or is it like the waves in the ocean ebbing and flowing? It definitely ebbs and flows. Okay. Um, sometimes, especially after a doctor's appointment, I am angry and frustrated. And then other times it's just like, I'm actually confident in who I am and like proud to be disabled because I am. Like it doesn't necessarily always have a feel behind it, but when it does, I find myself pushing harder against the oppression if that makes sense it does make sense we all have to push hard against the oppression uh this brings us to our last question what have you had to unlearn right as a result of being disabled um i've unlearned a lot Mm -hmm. and i've had to unpack a lot of internalized ableism okay um and ableism that I directed at myself for so long because I was a kid with undiagnosed chronic illnesses and pain and I I was told and I convinced myself from being told so often that the pain I was experiencing was normal and that everybody hurts sometimes is something a lot of doctors told me as like you know a 12 year old who 12 year olds aren't supposed to be in that much pain all the time but as a kid that translated to me as this is normal and I just can't handle it. And that I must be so much weaker than everyone else. When in reality, you know, I had fibromyalgia and arthritis and I ended up developing a high pain tolerance because I lived through it for so long with no help. And the ableism in medical settings still affects me. because the fibromyalgia especially is so stigmatized and I've had to I've had to learn I've had to unlearn um letting everything just happen to me and I've had to replace that with learning to fight and learning to proudly fight for my rights and to be taken seriously and I wouldn't be able to advocate without pride. That's wonderful to hear. I'm glad that you found your voice and that you found your strength. I've heard a lot of folks that I've been talking to throughout this series discuss internalized ableism as the thing that they've been actively unlearning. How does ableism or internalized ableism rather show up for you? Um, a lot of it is me convincing myself that just I shouldn't be proud of being disabled Mm -hmm. or that you know I'm not as disabled as I think I am because when I first got diagnosed with chronic illness I had a really hard time like getting to the point where I would even call myself disabled okay because so much um a lot of invisible disabilities, regular, normal, abled people don't take seriously and don't even consider disabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, so having to unlearn and teach myself to some degree that it's okay to call yourself disabled, even if you're not what a lot of abled people traditionally see as disabled. Invisible disabilities are still disabilities. Invisible disabilities are indeed still disabilities. Yes, it's so odd, isn't it, that the perception of disability that able-bodied people have is very like one size fits all and is very outdated. 
for sure. It doesn't it's, serve anyone. It's very one size fits all. If you don't fit their image of what a disabled person should look like, then they don't really take you seriously or like you don't look sick is a yeah. big one yeah. that I experience. Lizzie, this brings us to the end of my planned questions, but do you have any last thoughts that you would like to leave with our viewers? Um, if, if you feel anger, let it fuel you. And if you, you know, if there's any able people listening, then just know that we get angry about it sometimes and that's okay. And whatever we're feeling, it, you know, whatever we're feeling as disabled people that gives us disability pride, it's okay to feel. Yes, our feelings are valid. Lizzie, thank you so much for showing up today and helping me with this project. Where can people find you online? Um, okay, so I'm mostly active on Instagram. That's my plat my main platform. Mm. Um, but you can find me anywhere, basically, at either Lissy Cox, L-I-S-S-I-E-C-O-X, or Looks by Lissy, L-O-O-K-S-B-Y-L-I-S-S-I-E. Wonderful. Lizzie, thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you. You too. All right. Take care.